Welcome to the third video in my Jujutsu Kaisen arc analysis series. And in this video, I'm going over the fourth story arc of Jujutsu Kaisen, the versus Mahito arc. Like the previous story arcs that I have covered, a lot takes place within the versus Mahito arc. Not only are we properly introduced to the antagonist Mahito, we are also introduced to two key characters. Firstly, the grade one Jujutsu sorcerer Kento Nanami. And secondly, a student that Yuji forms a friendship with called Junpei Yoshino. Up until now, we have had a lot of action taking place within the story. But what sets this story arc apart from what we have seen so far is the emotional roller coaster that we are taking on. The versus Mahito arc focuses on the tragic life of Junpei and how in his final days he is manipulated by the special grade curse spirit Mahito who this arc is named after. Following the trail of Mahito's sinister acts are Yuji and Nanami. This investigation that Yuji undertakes forces him to utilize all of the training that he has learned with Gojo. But not only this, it forces him to come to terms with the prospect of not being able to save everybody. We know that Yuji wants to prevent people from dying at the hands of curses. This is because he desires for people to die natural deaths and for them to be surrounded by people that they love. Dying at the hands of a curse spirit is anything but natural and the victims of curse spirits in their final moments are filled with fear and they are far from being surrounded with their loved ones. So I'm going to go into the various events that occur within this story arc, including the investigation undertaken by Yuji and Nanami, as well as the friendship that forms between Junpei and Yuji, as well as this going over the various battles that take place during this arc, including the battle between Nanami and Mahito, and towards the end of the arc, Yuji and Nanami working together in order to battle against Mahito. So join me as I go over the heartbreaking versus Mahito arc. This fourth story arc of Jujutsu Kaisen takes place between chapters 19 to 31 of the manga and is adapted into episodes 9 to 13 of the anime. Most people, including myself, had really fallen in love with Jujutsu Kaisen by this point within the story. And when people usually ask when does a series get good, then I would easily say that it's during the versus Mahito arc for Jujutsu Kaisen. This arc begins with a monologue from this newly introduced character called Junpei, as he says to himself that if he had a button to kill people that he didn't like, then he would hesitate to press it. But if he had a button to kill people who didn't like him then he would press it without any second thoughts. It appears that Junpei is sat at the back of the cinema observing some students who are sat towards the front. It appears that all of them including Junpei are skipping school in order to watch a movie. We learn from a brief flashback that these students had been bullying Junpei while at the theatre screen Junpei witnesses Mahito disfiguring the three students. Without any fear or hesitation Junpei follows Mahito questioning if it is possible for him to do what he just did. We get to learn from these few pages that Junpei is kind hearted you can infer this from his desire to not to want bad to happen to those that he even hates. But because of the cruelty that he is made to undergo from the bullying at school, he feels no remorse for those individuals who hate him. And I believe that this is the reason why he asks Mahito if he can learn how to disfigure humans. He wouldn't think twice to disfigure them if he had learned that they hated him. We are then introduced to the grade 1 Jujutsu sorcerer Kento Nanami, as he and Yuji are following the residual cursed energy left behind the culprit who had disfigured the three students. Nanami is very stern and upright. He doesn't entertain Yuji's jokes and his lively, excitable behaviour. We learn that Nanami was a former office worker, now turned Jujutsu sorcerer. Nanami had studied at Jujutsu High, but he had left the Jujutsu world after realising that sorcerers are idiots. But he had realised that office workers are idiotic also. So in the end, he had returned to the world of Jujutsu sorcery, picking the lesser of the two evils. We can gather that Nanami is very strict and he follows the rules, and he doesn't particularly like the way that Gojo goes about things. He is clearly referencing the faith that Gojo appears to have in Yuji, Sukuna's vessel. Nanami states that it is for this reason that he doesn't recognize Yuji as a Jujutsu sorcerer. He tells Yuji that he needs to prove himself that he can be useful, despite the fact that he has the curse of Sukuna within him. Right at the start of this arc, Yuji affirms that he is going to prove Nanami wrong, through showing him just how useful he can be. After investigating the surroundings of the crime scene, they discover two curse spirits on the rooftop of the cinema. Nanami clearly underestimates Yuji. He states that Yuji is a child and as an adult he has an obligation obligation to look after him. During chapter 20, we get a description of the ability that Nanami utilises, and in addition to this, we get to learn about a new technique that Yuji had developed during his training with Gojo. Nanami describes this technique as forcibly creating a weak point on his opponent. His ability allows him to divide his opponent into tenths, and if he is able to strike the enemy at the weak point that is generated, then it will result in a critical hit. Yuji questions why Nanami had just revealed his ability, as this can be considered a weakness. This can easily disadvantage you, especially if your 
enemy knows how your technique works. But Nanami explains there are such techniques that are not affected if they are revealed to enemies. He explains this strategy of misleading by revealing, as he reveals the benefits of revealing one's hand and the rules that it initiates. Within the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, we learn that sometimes revealing your technique results in it becoming more effective. Nanami demonstrates this as he easily takes out the cursed spirit in front of him. He had defeated his opponent with a wrapped blade, and in addition to this, he had striked the cursed spirit with the back of the blade. You would have assumed that Nanami's attack would be unable to cut through the cursed spirit, but he easily severs its limbs with a dull blade. And this is thanks to Nanami's ability called the Ratio Technique. Immediately after this, Yuji demonstrates his own newly learned ability called Divergent Fist. We get a brief flashback to Yuji's training with Gojo, as he tells him that his cursed energy has a delay. Yuji's cursed energy cannot keep up with his speed. This results in a unique flow of cursed energy, as after Yuji punches a target, it results in a second attack occurring, where the cursed energy flows into its opponents right after he makes contact. This means that one punch will deal two devastating blows. Nanami quickly understands the potential that Yuji possesses, as he thinks to himself that if Yuji is able to combine his full physical strength with a cursed technique, then the results will be highly effective. He now knows why Gojo has taken a liking to Yuji. After the battle is concluded, Nanami notices that what they have been fighting against haven't been cursed spirits, but in fact they have been fighting against humans whose bodies have been transfigured using cursed energy. The corpses of these ex-humans are examined by Dr. Shoko, and she reassures a concerned Yuji that it wasn't because of him that these transfigured humans ended up dying. The cause of death was due to disfiguration. Yuji still appears to feel guilty, but Shoko tells him not to feel guilt, because he didn't kill them. Yuji is truly shaken at the prospect that he had dealt harm to another human being. Even Nanami notes how upset Yuji is after learning that other people have died. After this incident, they learn that the residual cursed energy was purposefully left there, for them to be guided to the rooftop of the cinema and to find those disfigured humans. Realizing that this matter won't be taken care of so easily, Yuji and Nanami resolve to get to the bottom of it. Meanwhile, the culprit behind the disfigurations has taken the young Junpei to his lair. He explains to him the nature of cursed spirits and how they are created, while also revealing that he himself was born thanks to the hatred that is created between people. While Junpei is in Mahito's lair, we get to see the various experiments that he is doing on human beings. He ends up having very frank discussions with Mahito and opens up to him. He tells him that he knows how evil people can be, so it is for this reason that he doesn't expect anything from anybody. And this is why when he sees another person's corpse, it means nothing to him. He is indifferent to it. He believes that this is what human beings should strive for, this indifference. Mahito also explains to us how his abilities work as we understand that he can manipulate the composition of one's soul. Their conversation concludes with Mahito encouraging Junpei, stating that he supports everything that Junpei represents. Mahito is clearly taking advantage of a troubled teenager and telling him whatever he wants to hear. But for what purpose? We don't really know what Mahito is seeking to gain from manipulating Junpei. But one thing that we are certain of is that no good can come from his interactions with his special grade cursed spirit. The investigation continues with Nanami trying to locate the hideout of the individual who disfigured the students, while Yuji and Ijichi are tasked to investigate Junpei. After Yuji leaves the room, it is revealed that Nanami knows exactly where Mahito's lair is. He doesn't want to risk putting Yuji in danger. After all, he's still a child. You can tell despite Nanami's cold outer shell, he has a kind heart, and he is considerate at least towards his underlings. During chapter 21, we also get an explanation as to what grade level sorcerers should be when they are up against various different cursed spirits of different levels. Ijichi explains to Yuji that a grade 2 sorcerer is supposed to win against a grade 2 spirit, and that a grade 2 sorcerer is close to the skill level of a grade 1 curse. This means that a sorcerer of any graded level will always be stronger than a cursed spirit of its same level. The only exception to this occurs when special graded sorcerers are matched up against special graded cursed spirits. Their power levels are much harder to comprehend and quantify, thus a special graded sorcerer is expected to be able to defeat every level of a cursed spirit. End of chapter 21, we see that Nanami has arrived within Mahito's lair. After defeating several transfigured humans, Mahito reveals himself. Nanami, not having forgotten his days of working overtime at the office, does not want to do the same here, so he immediately attacks Mahito. He successfully breaks his opponent's guard, pushing the cursed spirit back and then activating his ratio technique. Through this, he is able to sever the right forearm of Mahito, but it is quickly revealed to us that Mahito has the ability to heal himself. He is able to do this thanks to his powers of being able to read.
reshaped souls, including his own. During this battle, Nanami is surprised to have encountered a cursed spirit who is able to hold a conversation. After Mahito reveals that his cursed technique can touch and reshape the soul, he demonstrates how he can make humans small and store them for later use, but also complains that humans die usually after being transfigured. So he wonders what it would be like to transfigure a Jujutsu sorcerer, but Nanami has little time to waste, as he states that he had started work at 10 and it's 5.30 now, and whatever it takes he's going to be clocking out by 6, so he doesn't have time to waste with Mahito. Meanwhile, Yuji makes the acquaintance of Junpei by stealing the trousers of a teacher that was talking to him. When I'd first read this, it definitely got a laugh out of me because it came out of nowhere. The teacher's begging for Yuji to return, but he's focused and runs away with his pants. Yuji quickly gains Junpei's attention after he explains that he took the teacher's trousers because he was aware that Junpei didn't like his teacher. From this exchange and what we have seen of Yuji's character, you can tell that he is very understanding. He is able to understand individuals who are misunderstood by society as a large, and this is why Junpei is able to easily get along with Yuji's non-judgmental attitude. We then cut back to Nanami's battle with Mahito. As the time has just gone past 6 o'clock and he is unfortunately working overtime now, Mahito's technique is incredibly disturbing, as it is made apparent that the humans that he disfigures still have consciousness. He uses several disfigured humans to battle against Nanami, and in some instances they call out to Nanami for help. But remembering a conversation with Dr. Shoko from earlier, it is made apparent that once a human has been disfigured, they cannot be helped. The best thing to do is to kill the disfigured human for their own sake. When it comes to Nanami's character, there is a lot of reading between the lines. It is apparent that seeing the suffering of the disfigured human wavers Nanami's soul, and Maito even picks up on this. And it is because of Nanami being emotionally affected by this disfigured human's plight that the tide of the battle turns. Just moments before Nanami having to work overtime, Mahito had taken the upper hand in the battle. He was successfully able to injure Nanami by touching his soul. But the reason why Nanami's body wasn't disfigured and he didn't become a pawn to Mahito was because he was subconsciously protecting his soul with his cursed energy. But it doesn't bother Mahito because he is confident that he only has to touch his soul two or three more times for him to no longer be a human. After Nanami begins working overtime, his cursed energy begins to increase. Mahito deduces that Nanami had been restricting himself based upon time restraints. Up until now, he was limiting the power that he was releasing. He then goes on to explain his ratio technique to Mahito, as he describes it as a cursed technique that can divide an opponent with lines into several sections, and at the same time it forcibly creates a weak spot in one of the sections. Mahito of course is surprised that he is revealing how his technique works, but we are aware that revealing one's technique can result in it becoming much stronger through the explanation that we got earlier on in the story. In order to defeat Mahito, Nanami has two options. Either he continues to deal damage until the cursed spirit runs out of cursed energy, which is a very unlikely option, or secondly, he can completely destroy Mahito with a single strike, so he uses his ability ratio technique collapse. However, it misses Mahito and instead destroys his lair. Just before leaving, Nanami strikes Mahito's leg, and as his lair begins to implode onto him, Nanami is aware that this isn't enough to defeat Mahito, and he says that they will meet again if they are both still alive by then. The Grade 1 Sorcerer ends their confrontation by escaping from Mahito's crumbling lair. This entire exchange was very fascinating, as it occurred between two high-level individuals. We got to see the high-level abilities of a Jujutsu Sorcerer, while also experiencing one of the best special grade cursed spirits taking part in battle. It was a constant back and forth during this fight which kept me on the edge of my seat. There were occasions where Mahito had the upper hand, and equally as many scenarios where Nanami appeared to have the upper hand. One thing was for certain, the way that this battle was written, Akatami made sure that one individual did not appear stronger than the other, and it is for this reason that this whole fight had an air of unpredictability. Not being able to predict or know the outcome of the battle makes you feel more invested in its outcome, and Jujutsu Kaisen, similar to Hunter x Hunter, is able to successfully do this. And after having read so many different shonen stories, I can tell that Jujutsu Kaisen is an excellent series only by chapter 23. You can tell that the author knows exactly what he is doing, and he's playing to his strengths. And if you want to know why Jujutsu Kaisen is such a great battle shonen, then you need to look no further than the battle between Nanami and Mahito. We had everything from taunting, to intricate techniques, to making your opponent waver emotionally, well-explained power-ups, and healing abilities that didn't sound contrived or convoluted. After this battle occurs, we get some bonding time between Yuji and Junpei. They do initially appear to have some differences, but they end up bonding over their shared love of movies. While they are talking to each other, we see Suguru Geto walking past them, as it appears that befriending Junpei was a way for them to get closer to Sukuna's vessel. After bonding over movies and exchanging numbers, they are eventually found by Junpei's mother, who invites Yuji over for dinner. You can tell that Junpei is very close to his mother and cares a lot for her, as he scolds her for smoking. We then see that Maito has recovered from his battle with Nanami, and it appears that he is excited to fight against the Jujutsu Sorcerer once again, while Nanami who is tending to his wound 
Jones is fearful that the cursed spirit that he had just faced off against may become much stronger than he is now, growing to a point where Jujutsu sorcerers will not be able to handle him. Yuji appears to have a pleasant dinner with Junpei and his mother, as they all share a lot of laughs with each other. Junpei's mother eventually falls asleep, as Yuji describes her as a good person. We then get a flashback of Junpei's mother telling him that he doesn't have to go to school if he doesn't want to, and this is obviously in response to all of the bullying that Junpei was experiencing. She had explained to him that school is just one small fish tank, there are many other tanks out there. When Junpei asks about Yuji's parents, it is here that we learn that Yuji had never met his mother, and he can barely remember his father. The only family that he did have was his grandfather. Just as Yuji is about to leave, Junpei asks him that has he ever killed somebody as a Jujutsu sorcerer? He asks Yuji what he would do if he had no choice but to kill somebody. Yuji responds by stating that he would rather not kill if it were possible, but Junpei questions why he wouldn't kill an evil person. Yuji is aware that as a Jujutsu sorcerer, one day the choice of killing will be presented to him. Yuji is worried that if he begins to question the value of life, especially when he is up against an evil individual, then he is also fearful that maybe the lives of those people who are important to him will also become vague. He is fearful of losing this value that he holds to life, and it is for this reason that Yuji would prefer not to even kill evil individuals. That night, after Yuji leaves, Junpei thinks to himself that he had once assumed that people don't have hearts, and he was saved by those words. He was ultimately given power by Mahito thanks to those words. But after speaking to Yuji and thinking of his mother, he tells himself that if killing somebody means that his soul will be tainted, then he would choose not to kill. This is of course prior to the tragic events that are about to unfold. Junpei's mother ends up waking up from her sleep, and she notices that a strange finger has been placed in front of her. We can identify this finger as one of Sukuna's fingers. We are left to wonder how on earth did one of Sukuna's fingers end up within Junpei's home. Cursed spirits begin to be drawn to the finger while Junpei's mother is holding it. These very cursed spirits end up murdering her. We are not explicitly shown how she had died, but at the start of chapter 25, we get a description of how her corpse was found. The report states that the dead body of Junpei's mother was found at his home, along with one of Sukuna's fingers. Junpei's mother was believed to have been killed by one of the cursed spirits that was drawn to the finger. Her body was found severed as it was missing its bottom half. No visible evidence of blood was found at the crime scene, and disturbingly, the remaining top half of her body was found in a bed stuffed with an enormous amount of ice packs. After the death of Junpei's mother, he is approached by Mahito, who explains to him that the cursed object that they found within their home attracts curses. He asks Mahito what was this doing in his home. Mahito manipulates Junpei and tells him that somebody had implanted the cursed object within his home because they had resented Junpei or his mother. After being influenced by Mahito, he begins to assume that one of his old classmates who had previously bullied him had planted the cursed object within his home. The student that Junpei targets is being recognized at a ceremony within his school. Mahito ends up creating a curtain outside of the school while Junpei interrupts the ceremony. It appears that Mahito and Geto appear to be using Junpei in order to force Yuji into making a binding vow with Tsukuna. Junpei appears to have knocked out all of the students within the school as he approaches his target. The student called Shota had previously bullied Junpei and had even left a scar on his face after burning him with boiling water. Junpei continues his assault on Shota as he tells him that he is going to die no matter what he says. Just as Shota apologizes to Junpei, it appears that he has lost all sense of reason as he doesn't accept his apology and simply says so what to it. Yuji interrupts Junpei's assault and questions what on earth he is doing. Junpei, who appears to be a totally different character here, tells Yuji to stay out of this. His entire demeanor is so cold and apathetic, completely different to the individual that Yuji had befriended only the day before. Junpei summons a jellyfish-like Shikigami. He doesn't refer to Yuji by his name, he instead refers to him as a Jujutsu sorcerer, clearly distancing himself as much as he can with Yuji, and the way that he is saying it appears to be in a negative connotation, proving that Mahito's manipulation was successful, and he has even developed a hatred for Jujutsu sorcerers. Junpei tells Yuji that this situation has nothing to do with him, but Yuji isn't willing to back down. He fights back Junpei's Shikigami while trying to get through to him, pleading with him not to throw his life away. But at this point, after everything that he has experienced, Junpei is convinced that people don't have hearts, and he believes that Yuji is only pretending to be compassionate. But Yuji isn't convinced by Junpei's words, as he believes that they are a desperate attempt to hide the pain that Junpei is feeling. He successfully overpowers him by attacking Junpei himself rather than his Shikigami. After this, he finally opens up to Yuji, as he finds it difficult to believe that people have hearts, especially after knowing that somebody had cursed his mother. He breaks down into tears, giving in to his emotions after the loss of his mother. He attacks Yuji a final time with his Shikigami, but Yuji doesn't dodge the attack. He approaches a tearful Junpei as he promises him that they are going to find out who cursed his mother. When he feels like he is completely alone and nobody understands him, Yuji says that he is going to be there for him. He will listen to him. After hearing about what had happened to his mother, Yuji invites Junpei to Jujutsu High, stating that 
that there are teachers there who are incredibly strong and he will be able to make friends that he can trust. And together, they can put a stop to the individual who had cursed his mother. But just as Yuji tells Junpei to fight alongside him, Mahito appears out of nowhere. And so begins one of my favourite chapters that I have ever read within this series. Chapter 27 is one of the most heartbreaking portions of this story. Mahito ends up pinning down Yuji as Junpei realises Mahito wasn't a good person. Just as Yuji had gotten through to Junpei's heart and had offered him a dream of joining Jujutsu High along with him, Mahito appears and transfigures Junpei's body. The transfigured Junpei is ordered by Mahito to attack Yuji. Yuji holding back his friend tells him that he is going to help him. He calls upon Sukuna for help, telling him that he'll do whatever he wants. He pleads with Sukuna to help Junpei, but Sukuna refuses. Both Sukuna and Mahito begin laughing at Yuji's expense. This happens while Junpei dies in Yuji's arms. And in all honesty, I cannot remember another series that has made its protagonist go through so much turmoil within just 27 chapters. Seeing the distorted, maniacal faces of Sukuna and Mahito laughing while Yuji stares in shock. This panel has to be one of the best panels that I've ever seen within any manga, and it's enough to make you feel the hopelessness that Yuji must be feeling right now. At this moment, while he is being laughed at, Yuji realises that he had almost forgotten that these individuals he is facing off against are curses. After Junpei dies, Yuji goes on the offensive, as he immediately punches Mahito in the face. Somehow, Yuji was able to strike Mahito's soul. After accepting that his enemies are not human, Yuji declares that he is going to kill Mahito. The pure hatred that Yuji is feeling in this moment makes him feel like everything that he has said up until now has been a complete lie, especially after declaring that he is going to kill Mahito. You can see that the conversation that Yuji was having with Junpei earlier on about what he would do if he was presented with the choice of killing an individual is followed up here. Previously, Yuji had given a very self-righteous response, but in the heat of the moment and the raw emotion of the situation results in Yuji declaring that he is going to kill his opponent. Mahito even corrects him after he makes his declaration, questioning if he meant that he is going to exercise him instead of kill him. Mahito then desires to target every single student within the school, wanting to enrage Yuji so that he is left with no other choice but to make a binding vow with Sukuna. The whole purpose of this is so that Mahito can win Sukuna over to fight on their side. Their battle begins as an enraged Yuji fights throughout the school, but it is evident that Mahito has the upper hand especially after piercing Yuji's body with spikes. But just as Mahito is about to defeat Yuji by touching his soul, he is stopped by Sukuna. He warns him not to attempt to touch his soul ever again and that he should know his place. Thanks to Sukuna's interruption, Yuji is able to fight back. But despite this, Mahito is still able to appear behind Yuji and is about to attack him until Yuji is saved by Nanami. After Nanami realises that Yuji is able to actually hurt Mahito, they devise a plan together. They unleash a relentless barrage of attacks onto Mahito as they desperately try to create openings for each other. Mahito attempts to pin down Nanami while distracting Yuji by fighting disfigured humans. He had assumed that Yuji wouldn't have the heart to kill a human even if it was a transfigured one, but he was wrong as Yuji defeats the contorted humans and returns to save Nanami. Yuji's desire to help people is constantly being put to the test, and he's being put in very difficult situations, as well as his desire to ensure that people die a natural death is being pushed to its very limits. What can he do if he is facing off against a human that has been deformed and is pleading for Yuji to end its existence? All that Yuji can do is direct all of his anger and his pain towards the one who had caused all this to happen. After both Yuji and Nanami counter-attack and continuously attack Mahito, he is left with no choice but to unleash his own domain expansion. It appears that Mahito had only brought Nanami into his domain. He begins to accept that he has no way out of this situation as Nanami believes that he is going to be defeated. And it is here that we get a brief flashback which explains why Nanami had decided to rejoin Jujutsu Hai. Nanami had regularly been going to a bakery for lunch. He had noticed that the girl at the counter who serves him has a cursed spirit that is attached to her. He tells himself that it should be fine if he leaves it alone because he doesn't want to be mistaken for some sort of an exorcist if he attempts to help her. We get an insight into the job that Nanami had been doing. As he was trading in stocks and shares, his higher-ups had been so focused on making profits. Nanami's desire was to make enough money so that he could retire by 40 and move to the countryside, so that he could live out the rest of his life in peace. During this flashback, it's been about four years since he had left Jujutsu Hai, and in that entire time, the only thing that he was focused upon was money. During those four years, he didn't have to deal with curses or even interact with other people. He didn't care as long as he had money. After returning to the bakery and speaking to the girl at the counter, she tells him that her shoulders have been feeling really tight and that she can barely sleep. Nanami thinks to himself that his day-to-day -day work involves taking care of rich people's money and helping them to become richer. This work doesn't really make much of a difference to the world, but he realises that this girl who is working in the bakery but is making nowhere near enough money as he is, is offering to people a great service. If bakeries didn't exist, then what would people do if they had wanted to eat bread? 
Dad. At the bakery, Nanami had realized his purpose in life. He helps the girl at the bakery by destroying the curse spirit that is bothering her. She immediately begins to feel relief as she thanks Nanami, and it was at this moment that he had decided to quit his job and to rejoin Jujutsu Hai, realizing that his purpose was to assist others by freeing them from the problems of cursed spirits, instead of focusing solely on making money. Just as Nanami accepts his death and he feels that he has no regrets, Yuji breaks through the domain expansion. By Yuji entering into Mahito's domain, it results in Sukuna's soul once again making contact with Mahito, and this of course irritates Sukuna. He had already told Mahito that this should not have happened a second time. It results in Sukuna cutting down Mahito and injuring him. Immediately after this attack, Mahito's domain expansion ceases to exist and the battle ends. At the end of chapter 30, we get some insight into Sukuna, as it is stated that Sukuna has no concern for anybody but himself. He exists purely for leisure. For Ryomin Sukuna, it doesn't matter whether if Nanami or Mahito survive. The only person that Sukuna is interested in is Megumi. Aside from him, he truly doesn't care about anyone else. In chapter 31, the final chapter of the versus Mahito arc, just as Mahito is about to be finished off, he is able to escape. Yuji falls unconscious and we next see them when they return to base and they are tending to their wounds. Yuji questions if Nanami is going to lecture him, but he tells him that he is in no position to lecture somebody who had saved his life. He is appreciative of Yuji's persistence, because it is thanks to him that he is alive. At the end of this arc, Yuji appears to be deeply affected by the fact that he had killed people today. He is aware that people die and there is no way to avoid death, but Yuji is still adamant that people should be able to at least die a natural death. This is at least what he used to believe. Yuji had always thought about stopping others from killing, but now that he has killed himself, he isn't sure what it means to die a natural death. Nanami advises Yuji that life isn't as simple as people being good or evil, and death comes to all of us in different ways. He advises Yuji not to try to make sure that everybody dies a natural death, because this just sounds exhausting. But he realizes that no matter what he says, Yuji will continue on with his desire. But Nanami requests for him not to die because of his desire. He tells him that just like how he had needed Yuji to save him today, there will be others who will rely on him in the future. Yuji is a very important individual, because he is after all a Jujutsu Sorcerer. Nanami now having acknowledged Yuji as a Jujutsu Sorcerer is in reference to right at the start of this arc, where he had adamantly stated that he doesn't recognize Yuji as a Jujutsu Sorcerer. As the versus Maito arc wraps up, we see that Maito is recovering underground, and he desires to destroy Yuji's spirit once and for all, and he is confident that the Age of Curses is about to begin. Mahito was inspired after witnessing Sukuna, as he is reassured that Curses will become the dominant species as long as forces like Sukuna exist. Meanwhile, Yuji, who still holds hatred for what Mahito did, swears to himself that he will never lose again. Although he doesn't know what it means to die a natural death, he is adamant to continue moving forward until he does find out, and until he does kill Mahito. I think that we can all agree that the story of of Jujutsu Kaisen up until the start of the versus Mahito arc was incredible, but I do believe that during the versus Mahito arc, Jujutsu Kaisen just takes everything to another level. This arc properly introduces us to three characters who play a significant role within this story. The first being Nanami, who had left the world of Jujutsu sorcery, but after aimlessly pursuing money, but he had once again discovered his purpose and had rejoined Jujutsu High. He is aware that he has been gifted with the abilities of a Jujutsu sorcerer, and he knows that he needs to utilize these for good. His character had reformed to the extent that he was accepting of his own death while he was trapped within Mahito's domain expansion. He had felt that he could die without any regret, and this is because he had left his mundane office life in order to pursue a more fulfilling life as a Jujutsu sorcerer, despite all of the risks that are associated with it. As the story progresses, we continue to be familiarized with the character of Nanami, and let me tell you, he is definitely a character that grows on you, especially after every appearance and battle that he takes part in. Prior to this story arc, we were introduced to the character of Mahito. But of course, we really got to know him after this arc that was titled after him. The majority of the cursed spirits that we see Yuji and the others battle against are typically mindless and they are not aware or conscious of their actions. But Mahito is a special grade curse who is working within a group that desires for cursed spirits to dominate over humans. We see the lengths that a cursed spirit is willing to go to in order to oppress a human being, especially through Mahito's relationship with Junpei. Despite knowing everything that Junpei has gone through, he ends up manipulating the boy, reinforcing his negative outcome look on the world, and his belief that humans don't have hearts. Maito definitely didn't have any remorse, and in the end he even insulted Junpei, stating that he was no better than the people that he looked down upon. He was just as idiotic as those humans that he believed were heartless. Maito had no limit to the lengths that he would go through in order to fulfill his purpose, and it is for this reason that he leaves a very lasting impression with us as an antagonistic force that is not to be underestimated. Akutami does an excellent job of introducing this character and making us feel hatred towards him, and he does an 
an especially good job of explaining his group's larger purpose of sealing Gojo and forming a partnership with Sukuna. The last significant character that I want to talk about that features heavily within this story arc is of course the character of Junpei. His death was so impactful that anime only fans for a while were in denial and had believed that Junpei would return later on within the story. We even had Studio Mapper teasing us of an imaginary scene where Junpei did indeed join Jujutsu High and he is seen to be sat with Yuji and the others alive and well. It definitely adds more salt to the wound and I remember when this image was uploaded to Reddit and people were commenting pretending that Junpei was still alive, stating that he was a great addition to the cast and making up scenarios of where Junpei would meet the second years of Jujutsu High and within the most recent arc of the manga he would have revenge on Mahito and would battle against him. I love seeing community interactions like this and Jujutsu Kaisen has a very dedicated fan base and experiencing the series with a larger group of people who enjoy it as much as you do definitely makes the experience of reading weekly manga a lot more enjoyable and it takes me back to the days when the big three were being published each week and there would be a buzz after each new chapter was released of Bleach, Naruto and One Piece. But getting back onto the point, Junpei's character definitely resonated with a lot of us. I don't know about you but I could relate to a lot of the situations that Junpei had gone through, especially when it came to bullying or feeling like you were left out within school. The only source of happiness that Junpei had was returning home to his mother and I feel like after he was made to experience the death of his mother something snapped within Junpei's character and he had lost all faith in humanity. As painful as all of these experiences were for Junpei's character, it made for fascinating viewing as we saw the gradual shift in Junpei's views of what he believes a human life to be worth and this is perfectly juxtaposed with Yuji's beliefs about the worth of a life and it is sadly at the expense of Junpei's character that Yuji is given very necessary character growth as his idealistic goal of wanting people to die a natural death is crushed by the cruelty of reality. Junpei was somebody who Yuji had formed a friendship with and it is certainly somebody who he didn't want to lose. He cared about him and wanted him to see a different outlook on life. A life where you do have friends, a life where the teachers do understand you and a life where you are not misunderstood. Tragically Junpei never got to experience any of this and he only had a taste of it thanks to Yuji's friendship. After the death of Junpei, Yuji is left with a lot of questions for himself. What does it mean for an individual to die a natural death? What will he do if he is faced with the choice of killing an individual once again? And how does he feel now that he was forced to take the lives of humans who were disfigured by Mahito? These are the tragic consequences of leading a life as a Jujutsu sorcerer. After Junpei's death, Yuji now understandably has an intense hatred for Mahito. What will Yuji do if he encounters Mahito again? At the end of this arc, we are left with a lot of questions. And now the news that Yuji is still alive is going to be shared with the other students of Jujutsu High. I'm really fascinated to see how the story continues. But in terms of the versus Mahito arc, I think I'm going to leave it off here. And I want to hear all of your thoughts. What did you think about the fourth story arc of Jujutsu Kaisen? Were you impressed by it as much as I was? What did you think about the characters of Mahito, Nanami and Junpei? And how do you feel about the character growth that Yuji undergoes? And lastly, did you miss Gojo as much as I did during this story arc? I would love to know all of your thoughts. So definitely leave a comment under this video. And I can't wait to see you in my next Jujutsu Kaisen video. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, then please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. I have multiple tiers with rewards including access to an exclusive Discord server, video scripts, as well as being the first to know about unreleased upcoming videos. Thank you for your time and whatever you choose to contribute, I will appreciate and it will mean a lot to me.